little boy had just been removed from DCF custody and reunited with his parents. Welcome to Young Black Lives Honored. Be sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Also, give this video a thumbs up and leave a respectful comment below. Rashid Bryant was born to parents Jabora Deris and Christopher Bryant at North Shore Medical Center located in Miami-Dade County on December 13, 2018. He was the second youngest of 10 children. On November 6, 2020, less than a month shy of his second birthday, 911 operators received a call at around 11.53 a.m that a child was unresponsive. The child's mother, Jabora, stated that she checked on Rashid at approximately 10.25 a.m. and found him in distress and experiencing seizure-like activity until he was unresponsive and also noted that foam was coming out of his mouth. An investigation showed that the mother called the maternal aunt around 10.28 a.m. Following the call, the aunt came over to the home and they called 911 at 11.53 a.m. During the call for help, they were instructed on how to perform CPR and they continued until paramedics arrived and transported Rashid to the Miami Jackson North Medical Center where he was pronounced deceased. At the time of the incident and during interviews soon after, Jabora told the child protective investigator that she did not wait to call 911. Records indicated that this was untrue and approximately 83 minutes of delay had occurred. In response to this revelation, the 32-year-old said that she waited because she did not want to alarm the other children. The child's father, 36-year-old Christopher Bryant, told investigators that he was at work at the time of the incident and Jabora told him of Rashid's death after he had returned home and showered. A DCF report noted that both parents declined a drug test. Days after Rashid's death, state child welfare administrators filed a motion seeking custody of the couple's seven surviving children who were in the home at the time of the incident. Media reports indicated that the parents were investigated 24 times for child abuse. As the investigation into Rashid's death continued, his 17-year-old sister was interviewed. At the time of his passing, she lived with another relative and visited her mother on Fridays. The teen told investigators that Rashid was not allowed out of the room and on one occasion, she observed Christopher hitting the boy with a belt. The teen reported that the toddler was unable to keep food down and appeared smaller as time progressed. It was clear that the toddler had endured months of suffering leading up to his unfortunate death. A DCF report indicated that Rashid's paternal aunt reported that on May 28, 2020, Jabora texted her and sent photos of the toddler stating that his 16-year-old sibling took him out of the playpen, causing him to fall. The aunt said she instructed the mother to take him to the hospital. Records showed that a case walker had the mother take the child to the hospital on June 12, 2020, where she told hospital staff that he fell out of bed. The case walker wrote, that once at the hospital, the toddler was able to stand up, but he shifted his weight to his left leg upon detecting pain. The doctor did not suspect abuse and had Darius choose between an x-ray and supportive care, which included over-the-counter medication. Darius did not proceed with the x-ray. During the investigation, Texts were discovered which showed that the mother had texted the child's aunt saying she had, quote, beat his ass. The woman never faced criminal charges associated with the injury, but he was taken by DCF for several months only to be returned a short time prior to his passing. 
his older sister, had also told DCF that she saw the child in excruciating pain and he would cry if anyone got near him, especially near his leg. She also said that the child had not been out of bed in months following the leg injury. During her last visit to the home, just four days before the 911 call was placed, she noted that the child was still unable to walk. He had also regurgitated after eating, the right side of his body appeared limp, and his eyes were moving in different directions. Following an autopsy by the Miami-Dade medical examiner, Rashid's cause of death was listed as complication of acute and chronic blunt force injuries associated with parental neglect and withholding appropriate medical care. The manner of death was listed as homicide. In addition to evidence of a femur fracture, there was evidence of prior skull fractures and a fresh one in addition to a rib fracture. DCF concluded its investigation with verified findings of death, medical neglect, and bone fracture, while the Miami-Dade Police Department concluded their investigation and both of Rashid's parents were charged with medical neglect leading to great bodily harm. An arrest warrant indicated that Rashid had suffered two seizures in the month before his death, but his mother had never bothered to take him to a pediatrician. At the time, Darius's bond was set at $7,500. Ultimately, the charges were upgraded to manslaughter and aggravated child abuse. Not guilty pleas were entered on behalf of each of the accused who were held without bond. As of this video, they are currently awaiting trial. Christopher Bryant remains in custody while Jabora's online inmate search results show that she was not being held in a county facility. Some family members revealed that leading up to Rashi's death, they had not seen him in months and when they visited, he was always restricted to his bedroom. In June, at a pool party at the house of an aunt, the child and his father never left the car, according to the aunt. When she tried to pick up the child from his car seat, he began to cry. She never saw him again and other family members said that Rashid spent most of 2020 out of sight and in bed with excruciating leg pain. Rashid's maternal grandfather, who frequently visited the home, reported not seeing the child for about two months. The boy's brother, then 16, told police that he noticed something wrong with the child's leg two months before he died because the little boy cringed and cried when it was touched. The teen even described another incident where Rashid regurgitated all over his bed and then laid still and shaking with his legs up in the air. Other family members indicated that the child had lost weight, could not move his right arm, and screamed if someone attempted to touch his leg. They said they feared for him and the other children, but no one took their complaints seriously. DCF records showed that between 2004 and 2018, there were at least 14 reports made against the family. Most expressed concern for substance abuse, inadequate supervision, physical injury, and environmental hazards. Between 2010 and 2020, there were also four special conditions referrals and two services intake. Previously, Darius and one of her newborns had tested positive for marijuana, resulting in all of the children being removed. However, they were soon returned to the family in August 2018. Reports including those to a hotline alleged that Darius smoked marijuana with her older children. Most of her children did not go to school. Her home had no running water. The children were hungry and losing weight and one of the children had been living in the car with the family dog for approximately two weeks. Additionally, a report said that the couple was leaving a 15-year-old in charge of several younger siblings, including a two-year-old who had been seen outside naked. 
at some point, an allegation that Bryant had thrown one of his children into a car when escaping from police finally resulted in court order and in-home supervision of this family by DCF. The couple's children were again taken into custody around November 22, 2018 and placed with relatives and foster parents. Less than a month later, Rashid was born and he was immediately taken into state custody. In February 2020, Rashid was 14 months old and him in addition to three brothers were returned to their mother by court order. This was despite DCF recommending that the judge return the children gradually starting with one older child. The judge also saw fit to give quote liberal and supervised visitation to Deris with her other five children. To the surprise of case workers, about a month later, Jabora's 10th child was born. They reported that she had denied in court that she was pregnant. Three weeks after the birth of her 10th child, the judge saw fit to return her remaining four children, leaving the mother with custody of 10 children, five of which were younger than five years old. By August 2020, case managers ended their oversight of Rashid and his siblings, and by October 2020, all oversight regarding the family had been terminated by court order. This occurred even though his parents did not complete the proper training classes that were required. Very unsurprisingly, the reports of abuse and neglect continued to roll in, and just two weeks later, the 22-month-old was pronounced dead. For one year following Rashid's death, DCF refused to release records detailing events leading up to his death, asserting that it could not disclose those documents until the agency determined that he died because of neglect or abuse, which would then trigger their release under Florida law. As a response to this, the Miami Herald sued department administrators in February for violation of Florida law, which clearly states that when a child dies from a caregiver's abuse or neglect, DCF is required to release the agency's records. About a dozen media companies and advocacy groups joined the suits, including the Associated Press, the New York Times, the Tampa Bay Times, WPLG Local 10, and the First Amendment Foundation. DCF also claimed that the Miami-Dade State Attorney's Office had asked that the records not be divulged while the case was under investigation. Reporters regarded these as flimsy excuses, and in March 2022, a judge ruled that the agency's claims were not true and ordered the records be released. This was after the fact that less than a week following Rashid's death, the department wrote in a sworn statement that his injuries were due to child abuse, and a Miami-Dade prosecutor also testified under oath that a request for secrecy was never made. I will be following the case, so be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any updates. May the family and friends of Rashid Bryant Find solace in the happy memories and may his soul rest in perpetual peace. Thank you.